I'll make it real plain for you, mister. I came here to find a girl. And you're not leaving this room until you tell me where she is. Have Gun, Will Travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875, the Carlton Hotel, headquarters of a man called Paladin. Ah, oh, Mr. Paladin. Oh, you see guys, your tickets for theater tonight, and your newspaper. Oh, thank you, hey boy. <sighs> Now then, that's... I would read the uh, Sacramento Bee if I were you, Mr. Paladin. Oh? Why would you do that, hey, boy? Uh, because I already read. He's on page uh, one. Oh? Where? There. Ah. Oh. Wanted. Man with investigative ability, tact, perseverance, for possibly hazardous mission. He saw, you see? Could be former army officer. <laughs> Rather exacting demands, hey, boy. Oh, no, sir. Like it written just for you. Communicate Colonel H.P. Lathrop, River Acres, Sacramento, California. You know this colonel, Mr. Paladin? No, but I think I'd like to meet him. Oh, uh, I should send him wire saying uh, you are investigative and tactive and <laughs> perservative. Uh... No, never mind that, hey, boy. Just say, have gun, will travel. <laughs> If you want to know more than merely what's going on in the world, if you want, in addition, the perspective of a brilliant world traveler whose entire life has been one fascinating travelogue, listen to Lowell Thomas. Each weekday evening, CBS Radio presents the man who has seen all, whose lively imagination and experience make him one of the world's natural raconteurs. For hard news or delightful human interest sidelights, join Lowell Thomas. You can't beat him. Enjoy the worldly wisdom of the man who climbed to the rooftop of the world to meet the boy god of Tibet in person. Get the slant of the man who went back of the beyond to Australia's Never Never Land. Follow the colorful views of a man as at home on camelback as in a taxi. Monday through Friday on most of these stations, hear Lowell Thomas reporting the news. It's a service of CBS Radio, part of the different sound that makes such a sound difference in your listening habits. This station, and behind it, the CBS Radio Network, is proud to bring you weeknights, Lowell Thomas, reporting the news. Colonel H.P. Lathrop, River Acres, Sacramento, California. The home was even more impressive than the address. A barefooted Indian servant girl admitted me and led me down a long hallway and left me standing in a waiting room which was dwarfed by a giant coat of arms. Mr. Paladin? Yes. Colonel Lathrop. Happy to know you, sir. And you, sir. Ah, I see you've noticed my family coat of arms. <laughs> I could hardly not notice it, Colonel. Uh, if pride of family be a sin, sir, then I'm guilty. I'm proud of my family heritage. I'm certain you have every reason to be proud, Colonel. I trust you'll bear that in mind when you attend to the mission I've been contemplating for you. Oh, I've heard of you, Mr. Paladin. I placed that ad hoping you would answer it. I need a man who was able... Oh, Martha, my dear. I'm sorry. I didn't know we had visitors. This is Mr. Paladin, my dear. How do you do? How do you do, Mrs. Lathrop? Please forgive me. Pablo's very ill. I must hurry now. You'll be with us for dinner, Mr. Paladin? Well, of course I he will. How nice. <laughs> Excuse me now. Uh, the eternal nurse. My wife's always ministering to the sick, the lame and the lazy. Colonel, what is it you wish of me? Now, before we discuss business, you must refresh yourself. To Alamy. Yes, Colonel Lathrop. Take Mr. Paladin's bag to his room. Draw his bath. You've plenty of time for a bath, sir. We dine at eight. A brandy? A cigar? Yes, thank you, Colonel. You're probably anxious to know why you're here. <laughs> I am. I'm not certain my wife will approve of my reasons for contacting you. I approve of you, my dear. That's enough. <laughs> well, why am I here, Colonel? I want you to locate a woman for me, Mr. Paladin. A woman named Gloria Morgan. 
Yes, I've heard the name. And then you've also heard of Lodestar, Nevada. Yes. You've heard of it, I'm sure, my dear. Possibly I have. I can't say, one way or the other. Now, during the silver boom, it was a roaring mining camp. Was it? May I pour you more brandy, Mr. Paladin? No, no, thank you. Gloria Morgan was reigning queen of the Tenderloin District there until the boom was over. Then she disappeared. And your interest in locating her, Colonel? She's a missing chapter in a history I'm writing about the West. Oh, heavens! Is she so important you have to hire Mr. Paladin to find her, Colonel? Essential, my dear. I'm a stickler for exactness. I must meet her and know what she's like. I know that a gun battle was once fought for her favors. I know that her beauty and her fame were known throughout the camps. I know she imperiled hearts and lives with a smile. And what I don't know is whether she still lives or not. And I must know. Why don't you look into this matter yourself? I regret, Mr. Paladin, that I'm not physically up to it. You'll take the job? Yes. Yes, I will. I'd like to meet her, too. in, let your hospitality show you're sociable in the modern manner. Pepsi, you know, is the favorite of the smart and young at heart. Be sociable, look smart, keep up to date with Pepsi, drink light, refreshing Pepsi, stay young and fair and debonair, be sociable, have a Pepsi. Have you tried a Pepsi lately? It was a curious mission, searching for a dance hall queen. But no more curious than the man who instituted it, or the reasons he gave for wanting Gloria Morgan located. There were other people who had different ideas. I come to your room to warn you. Do not go to Lodastar. Colonel is a monster. He liked to hurt people. He is torturer. He, well, who is he torturing? His wife. He has been stabbing her with that name, Gloria Morgan. I think she... his sweetheart once. He want to find her, bring her here. He told me he never laid eyes on the woman. He tell lie. Perhaps, but then I'm paid to locate Gloria Morgan. If you do... If you bring her back here, I kill you. Who? Welcome to Lodestar. You like a room? A uh, room and some information. Yes, sir. Room 33. Any sign here, please? All right. Now, what was the information you wanted? Well, I'm trying to... I'm trying to locate a lady of some repute named Gloria Morgan. I haven't got an empty room. The key to 33, please. It's filled. The key. Uh, all right. All right. Well, you ain't gonna get nowhere around Lodestar looking for the likes of her. Bartender, I want to buy I'm out of it. I haven't named it yet. Or whatever it is, we ain't got it here, mister. All right. Hey! Uh, I'll get it myself. I heard you was kind of frisky and quick. I am. She must have been quite a lady. What lady? What did I say, lady? Yeah. The slip of the tongue. 
As a matter of fact, I'm not sure she was a lady, judging by the things I've heard of her. You the one called Paladin? Yeah. Move on, Maisie. Shut up. I can talk to him if I want to. You've been asking about Gloria Morgan, ain't you? Well, I knew her. I worked with her. Roomed with her once. Uh, how about some of that? Huh? My pleasure. Where can I find Gloria Morgan? I don't know where little Gloria is. But I can tell you where I wish she was. Oh? My man left me when he saw her. That's what. For all her own good looks, she couldn't hold a candle to me. Maisie. Oh, Mr. Summers. Get out of here, Maisie. Go on. Yes, sir. Stay where you are, Maisie. My name is Clay Summers, Paladin. Don't reach for the gun. Now let's go. It would appear I have no choice, Mr. Summers. That's right, you don't. Come on. Your horse? Yes. Okay, uh, I'll just take your gun. Now, Paladin, you show your face in Lodestar again. I'll kill you with your own gun. There'll be no fair fight. I'll ambush you. All right, mount up. Now, ride out. I was a teenage germ. That's right, I was a teenage germ, living in a lovely scratch on the tile bathroom floor. I came in on a saddle chew, and then I moved to the floor. There were millions of us germs, playing rock around the sink or hide and infect. My hostess was a wonderful woman. Every week she'd splash you all around us with nice warm soap and water. But then some rat squealed to her about Lysol, and we had to beat it. Lysol kills germs. It was murder. Yes, if you're a germ, you'll hate Lysol, because Lysol kills disease germs, many deadly viruses, too. Lysol also destroys bathroom odors. Cleaning every week with Lysol in the suds disinfects your bathroom from one cleaning to the next as nothing else can. A little Lysol brand disinfectant in the suds makes your favorite cleaners work better, including many that claim to sanitize. Lysol is now available in regular or pine fragrance, as little as 29 cents. We're looking for a new bathroom to live in. How about yours? I rode as ordered But by nightfall I was back in Lodestar Ready to meet the man who had threatened to shoot me on sight He seemed genuinely surprised to see me again when I appeared at his office Hold it I told you I know what you told me, Mr. Summers Now I'm telling you This is a Derringer Sit down, please What do you want? My gun, for one thing. It's a fine weapon. I just couldn't leave it behind. Where is it? Laying over there. Well. Keep your hands off that picture. That lady is lovely. The Gloria Morgan? Put that picture down. I don't want the picture, Mrs. Summers, but I want to talk about her. You must have been very fond of her. I don't understand how a woman like her rates your loyalty, why men will kill for her. She was filth. She was a cheat, a liar, and a thief, and worse. I know that for a fact. You know nothing, Paladin. Then what is the truth? She was all things to all men. She was saint or devil or whatever. I understand there was a gun battle fought for her favors. Not for her favors. For her hand in marriage. Oh. I suppose the other fella had as much right to court her as I did. You? But I... It was a good fight and a fair one. When it was all over, 
We were both near death. And Gloria Morgan? Well, she told us that she loved neither one of us. And she went away. All I have left of her is that picture. I don't know where she is now. I can't tell you that. You don't have to tell me, Mr. Summers. I know where to find Gloria Morgan. You go away! No, I can't very well do that. I told you I would kill you. So is everyone else, and I'm still alive. I want to see Colonel Lathrop. You find out about that woman? Yes. You are going to tell them? I was hired to. But I don't think that Gloria Morgan is going to hurt your mistress, follow me. Now take me to the Colonel. Come. Colonel, Miss Lathrop. Yeah, Mr. Paladin. Paladin. Come in, come in. Well, how's your patient, Mrs. Lathrop? Pablo is well, thank you. That'll be all, Tuolumne. Yes, Mrs. Lathrop. Well, were you successful, Mr. Paladin? Did you find Gloria Morgan? Yes. Well, where is she? Perhaps it's more important to know who she was rather than where she is, Colonel. I know who she was. I doubt it. I talked to many people, and a few agreed as to exactly what she was. Some alleged that she was a strumpet. Some held to the contrary. And others thought that Gloria Morgan was a victim of a rather ugly set of circumstances over which she managed to triumph. What circumstances? She was abandoned in a mining camp by a man who had brought her there under the pretense of marriage. And no money, no friends, no one to turn to. She did the best she could. She sang and danced in the saloons. She shared in the money that men spent for the pleasure of drinking in her company. Uh, is this distressing you, my dear? No. Go ahead, Mr. Paladin. Well, apparently Gloria Morgan managed to do these things without compromising her essential integrity. Two men wanted to marry her, and she rejected them both. But as far as I could learn, both men are still in love with her. Well, go on, Mr. Paladin. Many others still love her for her generosity. Now, I'm, I'm trying to crystallize my impression of Gloria Morgan as I learned to know her, Colonel. Mm. And that impression is... That she was a remarkable woman, whose friendship I would have considered a high honor, Colonel. Please go on, Mr. Paladin. Gloria Morgan's married today. Happily? Unhappily. I'm sure it was a good marriage to a proud man until he received information exposing his wife's past in the worst kind of light. So out of hurt and arrogant pride, he planned to punish her by having a third party confront her with proof of her identity in his presence. Now that will be quite enough, sir. The scheme was unworthy of the man, Colonel. Now, I have, a, I have an idea that he was still in love with his wife, but he was sick in his mind. And the pity of it all is that if this man had approached his wife in a reasonable manner, I'm certain she would have told him all he wanted to know. Yes, I'm sure she would have done that. But my husband paid you to make a report, Mr. Paladin. Why don't you make it? The whereabouts of Gloria Morgan? You want to know where she is, Colonel? No, Mr. Paladin. It's just as well. The Gloria Morgan of Boomtown days is dead. Do you believe that, Colonel? Yes. Yes, I believe it. Excuse me. Let him alone for a few moments, then go to him, Mrs. Lathrop. Thank you very much, Mr. Paladin. Oh, oh. Oh, terribly sorry. Well, it's quite all right. It's entirely my fault. Oh, on the contrary. I wasn't looking where I was going. <laughs> we could debate the matter if you'd care to join me for a cup of coffee. Uh, my name is Paladin. I shan't forget your gallantry or your intriguing invitation, Mr. Paladin. But I must hurry along. 
Good day. Uh, good day. Uh, we will meet again. Of course we shall. Oh, Mr. Paladin. When you come back to San Francisco? Uh, last night, hey boy. Uh, hey, boy, you're just the one I want to see. Oh, then why don't you look at me? Uh, that lady just going up the stairs. When did she come to San Francisco? Oh, uh, uh, three, uh, maybe four days ago. She's in what suite? Uh, mezzanine suite. But well, uh, I'll want theater tickets for tonight's performance. Uh, Mr. Paladin... And after you get those, see the chef. Now, a small supper, something very special, with wine for two people served in my suite. Oh, uh, you, uh, you better make it three, Mr. Paladin. Now. Why? Him. Who? Big man over there. He, uh, he her husband. Husband? Husband. He saw a bad turn of events, eh, Mr. Paladin? Mm, well, I hope he appreciates her. Never mind the tickets, hey, boy. Uh, but have the chef lay on a supper for two anyway. Well, what do you do? Uh, who you have dinner with? I don't know. Don't you ever get hungry? Me? Why not? Me? We don't have much time to talk like we used to. It's true about our uh, Me? Uh, supper? And you can tell me about that remarkable man, your uncle. Oh, yes, uh, uh, sir. Uh, uh, shall we say, uh, eight o'clock? Eight o'clock will be fine. Since spring is a season of awakening things, of summer's fulfillment, it's fitting that every year the American Cancer Society should raise its vitally needed funds in April. For each year, the April harvest of donations gives promise of new impetus in the drive to conquer cancer. Your local collection, under the banner of the American Cancer Society, is a drive to finance unlimited research and experiment. Progress already made has given hard-working doctors and scientists more hope than ever before. No panaceas have been found, but a growing number of cancers can be and are being cured. Thousands live today who would have seen no hint of hope a decade ago. Help spread the effectiveness of the anti-cancer crusade in two ways, with a checkup and a check. Have the family's health checked once a year, for early detection of cancer is still the safest road to a cure. And this month, give a generous donation to your local cancer society or to Cancer in care of your post office. Do it today. Have Gun, Will Travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Rolfe, is produced and directed by Norman MacDonald and stars John Daner as Paladin with Ben Wright as Hayboy. Tonight's story was written by Michael Fessier and adapted for radio by John Dawson. Featured in the cast were Jack Moyles, Lawrence Dobkin, Virginia Gregg, Eve McVeigh, Lillian Bayef, and Frank Gerstel. Hugh Douglas speaking. Join us again next week for Have Gun, Will Travel. <laughs>